welcome. Take a few seconds to look around you in this beautiful rotunda of our state capitol and to see this packed room on this occasion of International Holocaust Day of Remembrance. And I thank you for all of your participation. The first thank you, of course, to our blessed survivors and thank you survivors and family who are here with us today. And thank you for the partnership with the Minnesota National Guard and the many officers who assisted us today. Without the work of the Minnesota National Guard, this remembrance would not have been possible. Many people involved, but we'll start with Major General Menashe, the adjutant of the Minnesota National Guard, Brigadier General Lloyd Alt, Chaplain Morris, Lieutenant Colonel Olson, Major Baker, Major Auger. You get the idea that without the work of the Minnesota National Guard, this would not have been possible. And today we honor both the liberated and the liberators, which is our working message premise of this day of remembrance. I'd like to pay a special thank you to two great and wonderful people, Colonel Edward Shames and Herb Seworth, both veterans of the 101st Airborne who saw much combat in the Second World War in the European theater of operations. It'll be our pleasure to hear from the Colonel shortly. I'd like to also thank the JCRC staff who did such a wonderful job in putting together this event. David Sherman, the photographer whose work you're seeing out in the North Corridor. Ellen Gingold, who provided the buses that brought our survivors from both St. Paul and Minneapolis. Special thank you to Christa Tichenbacher Hudson, the Consul General of Germany, who is with us today. And many, many great friends who have come during their busy day to be with us today from so many different communities. I thank you. We're going to start with the members of our legislature who need to leave early because they have to honor previous commitments. And I'd also like to thank Sheldon and Lily Chester, whose generosity made so much of the portrait project available of the survivors. But I'd like to call to the lectern, Speaker of our House, Paul Thiessen. Well, thank you for being here uh, and welcome to the state capitol and for inviting the legislators uh, to participate in, in this event. Um, thank you to the JR, uh, JCRC for putting this together as well. Uh, most of all, uh, thank uh, all of you, uh, and, and particularly those folks um, who are survivors, uh, for your stories, uh, and all of you really for your work to remember uh, some of the darkest days in our, our shared history. Uh, it, in one hand, reminds us, and as I was looking at the, at the photographs, uh, it reminds us in some sense of the progress that we've made uh, as, as humanity, as a world. But um, these remembrances also remind us of the, a lot of the unfinished work that we have uh, yet to do uh, to create a more tolerant and peaceful society where people uh, aren't treated differently, uh, aren't bullied just because they're different, uh, and where our kids and neighborhoods are safe. Uh, from hatred and from violence. Uh, and the work that you do as part of this exhibit and being here with, on this day uh, is an important part of that long process that we have ahead of us. I looked last night at a journal that I kept on a trip I took to Israel. Uh, and after a visit uh, to Yad Vashem, uh, and remember I was young when I did this, so, um, but uh, I did note uh, in, in, in that journal that what is most powerful uh, from, the, from Yad Vashem is that you cannot avoid seeing and remembering the victims as individual people, the survivors as individual people. Uh, their eyes stared back and demanded that we, above all, honor, uh, that we uh, overcome our human lack of courage in the face of evil. And I think that the exhibit that we see out here today uh, does the same thing. It reminds us as humans and as people that we uh, have a lot uh, that we need to overcome individually uh, to make our communities that much stronger. So, you know, it really is our responsibility and our duty as representatives here in this building 
uh, to make sure that we instill in our work the values of equality and shared purpose. And I think the stories that you're telling today uh, and on an ongoing basis really help us to do that. So welcome and thank you for being here. Uh, it, it makes a big difference to us. Thank you. We're privileged to have many senators and representatives with us today. We'll say that Representative Hornstein is the child of survivors, so good to see Frank with us. It's now my privilege to have the President of the Senate, Senator Pappas, join us. Um, I would like to extend a welcome to all of you today for attending this remembrance ceremony, especially to Colonel Shames and to all the veterans and to all the survivors. Um, we certainly are here to honor you and respect you and thank you for, um, for being here. I spent some time yesterday in the North Corridor looking at the exhibit and reading some of your stories and some of the stories that were there and I can't help but admire and be touched by the bravery, by the perseverance and the just plain old dumb luck that helped you to survive. And as I think about our future, because we certainly continue to have a very delicate future, especially in the Middle East, um, I just feel like we need to hold our family close and our children close and pray to God that it never happens again. And as I have uh, three daughters and 15 grandchildren living in Israel, I worry about them every day and I worry about their future every day. But none of us are safe. You know, we live in a very dangerous world and it's incumbent upon all of us to work in whatever way we can for peace. Thank you very much. Sorry about the chills. Thank you, Senator Pappas, for those poignant remarks and memories. Senator Limmer, can you join us? Good afternoon. Thank you for the opportunity to address this group today. It really is a humbling event for me personally, and it's a deep honor to be asked to come and address you. I know that uh, Colonel Shames and I were visiting and I told him welcome to tropical Minnesota uh, because 11 degrees is certainly tropical for us. But uh, he comes from Arizona, by the way, if you don't know. So. But it's important to note, very important to note to pause and remember the International Holocaust Day. It's vitally important for not only we in the present generation, but also to keep this tradition alive for future generations to remember what happened not only in the 1930s and 40s in Europe, but what often continues in many, many different ways around the world. Not only to the Jewish population, but to others as well. Somehow man continues to go back to his darker nature and it repeats and repeats. So it's vitally important that we as a people, as a free people uniquely, is that we remember, we pause, we commemorate a particular day in a year to do exactly that. You know, it's also important to realize that of the officials here today, we stand united with you. We have Republicans, Democrats, conservatives, liberals, people of all faith, but we stand united today with you to remember. It is vitally important to remember, although there may be some in the world today that falsely believe that an event like the Holocaust never happened is absolutely preposterous, ridiculous, and a lie. And it's important to remember 
for not only, as I said, our generation, but the future generations, that we as mankind never forget, that we teach our children, mine included, that we can never forget what happened. Because, thank you, sir. And despite that sober reminder, we know that in particular, we welcome Colonel Shames to be with us today. I want to thank you all for coming. And again, a heartfelt thanks for inviting me to address you on this particular day. It's a day where hopefully we can be united as a people. Rather than focus on differences, we focus on the sameness and the need for human liberty and freedom throughout the world. So once again, I thank you, and may God bless you. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Limmer, for reminding us of that critical, I'll say even commandment, to learn the lessons of the Holocaust to prevent the genocides of the future. Representative Zellers. Well, good morning and thank you all uh, for attending today. Uh, my wife Kim is a uh, fifth grade teacher and uh, each day she goes to work uh, to teach our children, uh, to educate them, to provide them the future that we all want for them, want for themselves. But her other job, as uh, she tells me each day when she goes uh, is to make sure to, to learn from history. My grandmother was a one-room schoolhouse teacher and uh, was a history major. She said the most important thing that you can give to your children, the gift that you give them, uh, is the knowledge not only that you eat and part each day, uh, but where you've come from and where you've struggled, where you've been oppressed, where you've had difficulties, uh, that you learn from them. History will absolutely repeat itself if we do not stand up. Uh, we're here today standing with you. Uh, Colonel James, uh, we appreciate you being here. The uh, a band, original band of brothers here in our midst is just an absolute historic uh, event. Uh, Eva, thank you so much for coming and sharing. I know sometimes these things aren't easy to share. We, we have no idea, uh, but to share your uh, some of your experiences here so that not only we may we learn from them, but uh, as Senator Limmer said, that we never ever forget. And we never, as a human, being allow this to happen to anyone else amongst us, uh, whether it's here in our country or whether it's liberating those nations around the world. Uh, we thank you for the display as well. Uh, as we have lots of students coming through here, uh, we will treat this as an educational opportunity as well. Share that with them. But uh, again, thank you so much for sharing uh, what I'm sure is incredibly difficult to share, but that we may learn and that we will never, ever forget. Bless you for coming here today. Thank you, Representative Zellers, from coming from a family of educators and appreciating the importance of history. Secretary of State Richie and I have had the pleasure this past few months, six months, of working together to commemorate, with many others, the 150th anniversary of the Emancipation Proclamation, speaking of history. And today is actually Martin Luther King Jr.'s birthday, is today. So there are many other important historical events to remember at this time. Secretary of State Ritchie. Thank you very much. I was asked to come and read the proclamation from our governor on this very important day. And I was reading the materials and there was so much emphasis in the organizers to stress the liberators and the liberated those who were survivors, those who put their lives on the line to help end that threat, the march of Nazism and fascism worldwide. And I just want to take a moment to remind us of our three amazing governors who were part of those liberators. Governor Kui, naval pilot, courageous leader in the Second World War, 
a young leader who was from a long line of leaders who went off to serve this nation to defend our Constitution, including his grandfather, sharpshooter in the Minnesota First in the Civil War, Governor Quee's leadership, and his devotion to all matters of civil and human rights had been a lifelong leg legacy. He was one of those governors who was a liberator. A second was Governor Orville Freeman, went into the Marines before the war because he knew the war was coming, went to the Pacific, was very, very severely wounded, almost died, spent nearly a year in recovery. His wife at that time, Jane Freeman, went to be by his side. He did recover, and he returned home with a passion, both to get on with the life of building this great state, but also to never forget. Governor Freeman was one of those liberators as well. But perhaps the most interesting and important in one way was Governor Stassen, our youngest governor, elected in 1938 was well aware of what was going on inside of Germany and inside of Europe, was furious at the denial taking place in the United States, even among some of our most prominent citizens, even here in Minnesota, was invited to be the keynote speaker at the Republican National Convention in 1940. He was a young leader on a track to perhaps be a president someday. And he got up in that convention and said, the lights are going out in Europe. And he exhorted the nation and the Republican leadership and the nation's leaders to stop denying what was happening in Germany, stop denying what Hitler had said out loud in Mein Kampf, to stop denying and to take this nation into active preparation and to becoming liberators instead of deniers. He came home. He said, I will run for office a third time. I will win that election, I will complete my budget, then I will resign the post of governor and go off to stop Hitler and the Nazis, and that is what he did, leading courageously in the Pacific, including the liberation of a prisoner of war camp in Japan, prisoners who would surely have been killed by the Japanese, as so many others were. And he came home with the devotion to never let this die and his devotion in life through his work with the American Baptist Conference, where he watched and walked and marched with Dr. Martin Luther King in 1963. He went to Russia and fought for religious freedom in the former Soviet Union. This is a liberator who was also a politician, who was a governor, who gave us an example of what public service, that doesn't mean we never forget, it means we never stop acting, and he spent his whole life. And to me, that's the importance of this day, that we remember, we remember what was done to humans by other humans, and we dedicate ourselves to never let it happen again. But we don't forget that it takes putting our lives on the line in public service, in the armed forces, in service to our nation to make sure it doesn't happen again. Prayer is incredibly important in preventing Holocaust of the future but so is action. And these three governors put their lives on the line to make that happen. I'm proud to read the proclamation from our governor, Mark Dayton. During the Nazi era, from 1933 to 1945, six million Jews, including one million children, and five million non-Jewish civilians and prisoners of war were murdered by Nazi Germany in the Holocaust. And the history of the Holocaust provides the opportunity to reflect on the moral responsibilities of individuals, societies, and governments in our world, and to overcome prejudice and inhumanity through tolerance, understanding, learning, and remembrance. And through resolution, the General Assembly of the United Nations has adopted International Holocaust Remembrance Day, a day to remember the victims of the Holocaust to honor the courage and dedication shown by soldiers and others who liberated the concentration camps where the Holocaust occurred. And on Holocaust Remembrance Day and every day, the state of Minnesota and its citizens remember the terrible events of the Holocaust and honor the victims and the 16 million Americans 
and 236,000 Minnesotans who served in the United States military during the Second World War, whose bravery and sacrifice were instrumental in ending the loss of innocent civilians. And the state of Minnesota remains vigilant in the stand against hatred, persecution, and tyranny, and is dedicated to the principles of individual freedom in a just society. Now, therefore, I, Mark Dayton, Governor of Minnesota, do by proclaim January 15, 2013, as Holocaust Remembrance Day. Thank you very much. Thank you, Secretary of State Ritchie. Uh, speaking of our governor, Governor Dayton, we wish him a speedy recovery. And thank you for reminding us of the bravery of our three governors who served in the Second World War. Indeed, the greatest generation.